so those go away because we're multiplying by 1 and dividing by 1 so we just have f of a so it might help to just remember that these are the ends that are changing so um, that's what we're increasing okay so keep that in mind because I know like this x minus a part gets confusing but we're changing the ends so then we have a plus because of sigma and then if n is 1 we have f prime of a which is really just f prime of x and then plugging in whatever you have for a into that x divided by 1 factorial which is still 1 so that stays the same so we have f prime of a and then times x minus a to the power of 1 which is just x minus a nice so the first two terms are pretty nice and if we actually just stopped here this is uh, the linear approximation expression so you might have seen this before and you might have seen it in this context but you also um, might just know it from the definition of the derivative at a point but either way uh, these are the first two terms so if you just stopped here you could put a little approximation so the if n is 2, so we have another plus the second derivative f prime prime of a over 2 factorial times x minus a squared. So I'm just increasing the n 1 by 1, 1 by 1. So an extra derivative divided by 1 extra n, so 2 factorial times x minus a squared. And then again, f prime 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 so it's a little counting problem now 3 the third derivative over 3 factorial times x minus a cubed and then dot 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 dot, dot. you can just keep going the fourth derivative over 4 factorial and this thing to the power of 4 like so so that's the idea and the reason I wrote it like this with the x minus a to the n on the side is because actually what this is about is we are approximating or expanding a function f of x into a polynomial and the reason it's a polynomial is because at x equals a this is a number the f prime of a is going to be a number so our variables f of x are variables actually x so it's this x minus a thing and x minus a squared so we have a linear quadratic cubic these are all going to end up being numbers or coefficients so it's going to go on to infinity but if we just chop it off here like we said it's an approximation so this is our linear approximation quadratic approximation cubic approximation so what that means the significance of that is that if we have some wonky weirdo function um, as long as we know we can use some derivative rules if we can find these derivatives at our a and assuming we don't have any differentiability issues like we don't want this to break but at our x equals a assuming we can calculate all these we can actually study or estimate some properties of our f of x by using this and so if a happens to be zero so if we expand about x equals zero or when a is zero same thing because we're doing this about x equals a and if a is zero then um, it's called the Maclaurin series and that's literally it is just a special case so if you were to find the Maclaurin expansion, you just set a to be zero. So it's f of zero plus f prime of zero times x minus zero, which is just going to be x f prime prime of zero. So really, when you want to calculate this stuff, it's basically just a giant derivative party, a derivative party. It's kind of fun. So you find all these derivatives, and then you find it at your particular a, and especially with Maclaurin, you just put it in zero so usually it's not too bad um, and that's it you just plug in jug here so let's start 
Yes. 